if you're on the internet getting advice from a bunch of other men, oftentimes these men have never been with a single woman. It's like incels giving advice to other incels on how not to be an incel. Chest up, shoulders back. Welcome to Revival Fitness, everybody. Your home for gains and brains. And today, guys, we're going to continue the whole lookism discussion. A lot of you have asked for this video in some form or fashion. Now I'm going to give you guys just more of a comprehensive rundown of my opinions on the so-called black pill in dating or lookism. I guess we'll start with the good, what I think about it. The biggest pro of the black pill, from what I gather, is the fact that it's ultimately correct, at least in the core facet, which is looks are the most important thing when it comes to dating, at least on the front end. Without having any understanding or knowledge of it, your personality, your history, all this other stuff, right? This goes for anything, even if you're going to buy a product at a store or online or something. The first thing that catches your eye is the aesthetics of said thing or person, right? You can't really debate that. Now, I do believe that when it comes to the whole personality charisma thing, I think that once the looks threshold is met, that's whenever it can start to change a bit. So if you're competing for a woman with another guy, well, let's be honest, it's numerous other guys. And even you guys who think that women are just single, or even a lot of women now who are committed, you're competing with more than one guy for her. You guys might not realize that, but that's the truth. But the woman has her looks threshold, which we're going to talk about later on in this video too. All these guys she's talking to currently meet it, or else, well, she wouldn't be talking to them right? Unless she's going to use them for their resources and money. The only way in my estimation that the looks thing can be overcome, it's not going to be game or any of this stuff, some woo-woo talk. It's really if the woman is going to view you as nothing more than a wallet or some type of provider. That's what's going to overcome the looks thing. And even then, I don't think the woman's going to take that type of guy seriously, stay really committed to him, etc. if she's only using you for the resources. But that's whenever the whole charisma thing can come into play and the social skills and your personality, etc. So if you have two guys the woman deems as good looking and one of them is just very, very bashful, he's kind of shy, awkward, and the other guy is more outgoing, he carries a conversation better, he's more assertive, that type of thing, I would be hard pressed to believe that the latter guy is not going to end up winning out. So, of course, personality matters to some extent, okay? But the people that are going to comment and say things like, oh, well, it's all about personality and looks don't matter and all this stuff, that is outdated old school PUA thinking, guys. I mean, truthfully, I don't know who even believes that anymore besides PUA type of dudes on the internet trying to sell things. So looks on the front end are the most important thing. And that's something you have to keep in mind too, man. When it comes to looks... This is what gets a lot of guys upset, and I understand it, but it's reality. There's always a guy who's going to be more attractive than you, you know? There's always going to be a guy who is taller, better jawline, bigger muscles, more ripped, more defined six-pack, bigger downstairs if you catch my drift, right? So all of these things, that you can't really control for them. You can't stress yourself out over them. But that is the biggest thing I think the black pill gets correct. It's the utter importance of looks in dating especially in the modern era. And I'm sure there's going to be some 1980s heads in the comments below like, oh man, well, I'm just a short, bald, ugly guy. And I'll tell you what, I've got this stunner of a woman and she's... Bah, bah, bah. It's like, okay, dude. Once again, those guys are oftentimes LARPing their faces off. But even so, let's assume that was true. All of these old heads, when they talk, they're talking pre-social media, okay? They're talking back at a time whenever the only guys women had access to were in their 10 to 20 mile radius. Women now, everybody now has access to the global marketplace of other people, right? You can go on Tinder and use the passport function. If you're on Instagram or any other application in general, you can talk to people from all over the world. These women can go online and see the hottest guys or who they perceive as the hottest guys, whatever they want. And you guys probably know this for yourselves. Women spend all day on Instagram I mean, the only time a woman is not looking at Instagram, she's probably looking at TikTok or Facebook, maybe YouTube, or she's at work. Maybe she's walking the dog, 
or playing with the cat. And even then, if they're spending time with their pets, you know they're gonna start taking pictures and videos of the pets to post it on Instagram. Most people are meeting their partners, whether that is short term or long term, they're meeting online now. And I'm not gonna make a judgment call on that. There are pros and cons to that entire thing. But the fact of the matter is guys, most people now meet online in some capacity. Even if you go to the same school as a girl, she probably has seen your Instagram profile before she talked to you. But I would say, especially the younger you are now, these girls basically use your Instagram profile and pictures they can see of you as your resume and business card. That's really what it is at this point. I mean, these women are not just looking at your profile like, hmm, he seems like he has a great personality. I saw one of those like PUA dude I'll have to find screenshots if I can remember, but he basically had a video saying like, use these Instagram captions to attract women. And it was like some witty nonsense. And it's like, dude, Instagram captions to attract women? The stuff some of these PUA type of dudes come up with is remarkable, seriously. And something to keep in mind too, this is what flies in the face of the whole PUA thing. Women choose men when it comes to dating. The old adage is that like men are the hunters, women are the hunted. You know, oh, the men are out there scouring and the men are the ones that run game and do this and that. This might be a reality check for some of you guys, but the women are the ones who do the choosing. If you really think about it, women are the ones who run game on the men. Now, it's not game in the sense of old PUA, like she comes up with a fancy hat on and she does peacocking and she negs you and all this other stuff, right? But women, if they see a man in their vicinity that they deem as attractive, she's going to do something to get your attention. She could talk to you herself. She could position herself near you. She might have her friend reach out and talk to you. I mean, she's without a doubt stalking your Instagram if she can find it before all of this is happening too, if she sees you to begin with, right? So that's something a lot of guys don't realize. And that's why the PUA dudes at this point are on their last leg because I think more and more people are realizing this with social media, but the women are doing the choosing. And I've told you guys, the past number of women I've been with, and I think back to even my college days, Almost all the women I've ever been with, they initiated it somehow. Not even in dating, man. Think about like professional modeling and all this other stuff, right? Like if you are a genetically blessed person with looks, especially the higher up the threshold you go, very tall, crazy defined features, whatever the thing might be, that's going to open a lot of doors for you that other people simply will never get based on genetics. So Genetic determinism, I guess this goes into the next thing. This is, I guess, a pro and a con. It's sort of a mixed bag. I believe genetic determinism is real. Anybody that says they don't think that is either lying to you and themselves or they're just delusional. I'm in the fitness space. This is something a lot of guys sell as hopium to people in fitness, right? Like you hear this all the time. Oh, the natural limit doesn't exist. And anybody can build this much muscle if you just put in the dedication effort, all this stuff. Okay, listen, guys, obviously you can change your body significantly if you put in the time and the effort. Obviously you can make improvements. You can build muscle, get stronger, get lean, get ripped, even all this other stuff. Okay, I'm not going to take the typical it's over route and say that that's never going to happen. That said, though, genetics are still a huge factor. There are some guys, no matter how hard they try, they will never in their life bench press 315 pounds. Maybe they could bloat max their way to a 315 bench and they're just going to itch and itch and itch and they might get it for a cheat rep once. That's reality, guys. I know that's not popular to say, especially in the fitness space now, but there's a lot of guys genetically, at least naturally speaking, they're not going to bench 315. You can give the average person all the money in the world. They could do nothing but eat, sleep, train, repeat. To become a pro athlete, they still would not become a pro athlete. That's how important genetics are. Some people are just born to run faster, jump higher, be stronger, be able to take punches better. I'm not going to say it's over for everybody because that's too fatalistic in my opinion, but genetic determinism broad scope is a very real thing. The sun is very bright right now. The lighting probably looks very weird here, but that goes into Probably, I wouldn't even say the biggest problem per se of the black pill, but something that is an issue in my estimation is the defeatism and the doomerism. Some of the black pill content I've seen, at least in the comment sections, you have these guys saying like, oh man, it's over. That's the common phrase, right? It's over or even better, it never began. That's something else about the black pill that's a pro I should have mentioned. It is very entertaining. The comment sections and the terminology and the memes they have, absolutely hysterical. You gotta have a pretty good sense of humor 
and like ability to laugh at yourself to find it funny, but they're very funny. I would assume that a lot of these guys in the comment sections decrying that it's over and they have no chance and all this stuff, I would assume that a lot of them are just younger dudes in general who some of them might not even have hit puberty yet. Some of them probably just never have really grasped looks maxing and all of the stuff that entails. A lot of them don't have social skills yet. Again, social skills do play a part after you've met the looks threshold. I was in the same position whenever I was younger. Men, socially speaking, are going to take longer to develop than women in the vast majority of cases simply because women are getting hit on from the time they're teenagers. A lot of the time, unfortunately, these girls are underage and they're still getting hit on by older guys. Dude, every woman has a story of, oh, I was 16, I dated a guy who was 30. That's way more common than you guys might realize. So as I just mentioned, if girls are giving a certain guy signals, but he's only 16 years old or something and he doesn't necessarily pick up on that, he may never get the girl, right? And again, girls are going to approach guys in certain instances, but there's a lot of women who are never going to directly approach a guy. They might look at him over and over and giggle and get around him, but they're never going to walk up and say, hey, I think you're cute or handsome, right? So in those instances, if the guy does not have the requisite social skills to pick up on these cues and other things like that, he's going to be leaving girls on the table. A lot of the time too, even if they sort of think they can sense a signal, they're gonna be too insecure or shy or think it's toxic or something to go talk to the woman. I can even think back to myself in college, guys, there would be women who would look at me like in the gym or in class or something. And I would just think like, oh, like why does this woman keep looking at me? And then in hindsight, it's like, dude, she totally wanted it, right? But you just didn't put two and two together. Or even if you sort of did, you were too scared to make the move. So that's definitely a real thing. Again, not every single guy is gonna be this bona fide giga chad who women are just fawning over everywhere he goes. That's another issue with the black pill, I think too. Well, this is a big one actually. They seem to apply male beauty standards when it comes to talking about male-female dynamics. These black pill guys make it sound like only the most chad of the chad guys are getting women. They will make it sound like if you're under six foot, no women. If you do not have certain facial features, no women. If your jawline is not perfectly out to this specific angle, or if you don't have this much gap between your nose and your lips or whatever, your eye ridge, all this stuff they go into. These guys basically talk like plastic surgeons, even though a lot of them probably aren't even gonna become plastic surgeons. You probably should put all that knowledge to use, guys, seriously. Plastic surgery is gonna keep booming as an industry among not only women, but also men. Don't fall into this entire idea that, oh, if I don't have X, Y, and Z features, if I don't look like a male model, that it's over. You guys need to realize this too. A lot of the men with the so-called perfect aesthetics in body and in face, they're not straight men. They might be the woman's gay bestie or something, but they don't actually want to attract those women. What do they call it? The male gaze, right? They're like, oh, you're applying the male gaze, not the female gaze. Dude, I remember hearing about this stuff in like, a women in gender studies class in college years ago, the male gaze and the female gaze. I'm not very brushed up on it because I didn't pay attention in that useless class, but it's definitely true that if you're on the internet getting advice from a bunch of other men, oftentimes these men have never been with a single woman and they're gonna give you looks advice on how to attract women. What are they talking about? I mean, again, they can give you general pointers and stuff, but ultimately they're just parroting things. They have no actual experience in that arena. It's like incels giving advice to other incels on how not to be an incel. But that's something I've seen. Basically, the guys who push the more masculine type of aesthetic, it's like, oh yeah, like nice rugged beard and big jacked muscles and stuff. A lot of the black pill guys will say like, oh, that's cope and that doesn't work because women like more pretty boy looking dudes. Again, guys, that's gonna depend on the woman. I think that really speaks to the age difference though. Because I can say for myself, I got plenty of women whenever I was 155 pound pencil neck and I had pretty much an afro going. My hair was like twice as long, three times as long as it is now. I got tons of women in college looking like that. I went to the gym, obviously, but I was still in novice purgatory. I was still very small and very weak in the grand scheme of things, especially compared to now. I'm the size I am now. It has not been a deterrent to women. You know what I mean? So I think that's a big age difference that you see when it comes to, oh, women like femboys and the wispy hair and the big baggy clothes and the jewelry and the K-pop star type of look. I would say generally the younger you are, the more true that is. But even then, this is going to vary based on the woman. But I don't think any older guy like mid-20s and beyond 
I don't think women are going to be turning down a masculine type of look. All right, now that doesn't mean, you know, go total crazy and like shave your head and grow this massive beard. That's one of the biggest things with the black pill I notice, at least in the stuff that I've seen. They seem to apply this mass encompassing beauty standard to every single man. And then I guess we could classify this as the ugly portion of the video. The final point I want to make here, the face ratings. Guys, I mentioned this in my wheat waffles video. I'm going to put that in the pinned comment down below, but getting your face rated by a man as a heterosexual guy, what are you doing? It's a rating from a guy. Unless you're trying to smash guys, I don't know why you would want to get that. The women are the only ones, tangibly speaking, who can rate the men's faces. And even then, women are not looking at dudes like robots in public like, oh, he's a 6.5, he's an 8, he's a 4.3. At the end of the day, you meet her looks threshold or you don't. If you're below that line, the only real chance you have is if you're going to beta bucks and just pay for her stuff as she strings you along in a lot of cases. Maybe in a sugaring type of arrangement, you can get it that way if you're directly paying for it. But that's really it. From what I can tell, the only real information that is applicable that a face rating can give you is if it's like, hey, well, your chin's a little bit weak. Maybe grow your facial hair a certain way to cover up your chin. Or maybe do a certain type of hairstyle depending on the shape of your head. This is stuff that people who do casting and props and makeup and stuff for movies and entertainment, they've known this for years, guys. Barbers know a lot of this stuff too, right? This is not some new information. But aside from that, what is the face rating going to do? So not only are you getting a face rating from a man that is totally subjective, he has no perspective from what the woman sees in all of the avenues that women are going to perceive a man in terms of attraction. You have that aspect of it. You have a bunch of guys on the internet wasting time sitting around on their computer, like analyzing, okay, this guy, we have him from the front and from the side and from the back. Not just like, oh yeah, that guy's handsome. He probably does well. Or like, oh yeah, that guy probably gets a lot of women. They sit there and dissect this stuff. I wouldn't go as far as to say that's mentally ill, but it's kind of close. That does not tangibly affect you how attractive or unattractive some other guy is. It's like the same thing with Natty or not in fitness, man. These guys spend hours on the internet every single day. Oh, this guy, is he natural or not? He's probably not. What does he take? I think he takes this. I think he's natural. He's been training. This. Bro, this does not affect you in any way. So the level of mental masturbation these guys undergo on a regular basis to, I guess, feel better about themselves. I guess that's what it really comes down to. It's like, oh, well, I don't get any women. I'm having no luck. But this guy, look how handsome he is. He gets a lot. I guess they're kind of trying to live vicariously through these dudes. Like, oh, man, if I looked like him, I get all the women. I don't think that mindset is healthy, regardless of the whole mental health aspect of it. It's just a huge waste of time. So when it comes to the black pill, there are a lot of potential pitfalls with it. You know, the pessimism, the face rating, getting entrenched in the doomer mentality. Those are very real things. But if you can... Keep those at an arm's length. It's like any other movement or ideology, et cetera, right? There's good and bad to it. You have to kind of pick and choose what you want to apply. If you can push away the nonsense and you can understand how important looks are. I mean, dude, even whenever you're a kid, do you remember whenever you're a little kid or if you have younger siblings or cousins now? And what do all the moms always say to him? The moms and the dads and the parents are like, oh yeah, he's a little handsome devil. He's going to do well with the ladies. He's going to be a heartbreaker. Right? I mean, people can recognize this stuff in very young children. You see what I mean? So if you don't understand how important looks are at this point, I don't know what to tell you. I guess keep buying PUA courses and stuff and see if that works for you, which it probably won't. But if you can push away the negatives of the black pill or keep them at a distance and start to practically looks max, in addition to working on the social skills and stuff, I know some of the black pillars think social skills or cope and that they have no relevance or anything. That just shows you're immature and have no experience interacting as a human being. You probably need to get out of the basement, some of you. But if you can practically apply steps to become more attractive physically and in terms of social skills as a dude, you're going to improve your prospects. So if you guys want more information on how to improve your body specifically on this channel, I have a lot of stuff for you. Check out my other content and more will be coming in the future. Drop your opinions down below and tell me what you guys think. So thank you guys for watching. Shout out as always to the Patreon supporters and the channel members. Hit me up in the links down below to get in direct contact and save money on great products and services. 
and I will catch you guys next time.